Good morning. This is Pastor Jeff. This is our daily lectionary readings for Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. Psalm 128 is once again our psalm reading. Isaiah chapter 65 verses 17 through 25 is our Old Testament reading. And the book of Romans chapter 4 verses 6 through 13 is going to be our New Testament reading. It is Tuesday, so we're still reflecting back on what happened at church on Sunday, and I am going to remain in the message. Psalm 128. All you who fear God, how blessed you are. How happily you walk on the smooth, straight road. You worked hard and deserve all you've got coming. Enjoy the blessing. Soak in the goodness. Your wife will bear children as a vine bears grapes. Your household lush as a vineyard, the children around your table, as fresh and promising as young olive shoots, stand in awe of God's yes. Oh, how he blesses the one who fears God. Enjoy the good life in Jerusalem every day of your life, and enjoy your grandchildren. Peace to Israel. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. Verses 17 through 25. Pay close attention now. I'm creating new heavens and a new earth. All the early troubles, chaos, and pain are things of the past to be forgotten. Look ahead with joy. Anticipate what I'm creating. I'll create Jerusalem as sheer joy. Create my people as pure delight. I'll take joy in Jerusalem. Take delight in my people. No more sounds of weeping in the city, no cries of anguish, no more babies dying in the cradle or old people who don't enjoy a full lifetime. 100th birthdays will be considered normal. Anything less will seem like a cheat. They'll build houses and move in. They'll plant fields and eat what they grow. No more building a house that some outsiders take over. No more planting fields that some enemies confiscate. For my people will be as long-lived as trees. My chosen ones will have satisfaction in their work. They won't work and have nothing come of it. They won't have children snatched out from under them. For they themselves are plantings, blessed by God. With their children and grandchildren, likewise, God blessed. Before they call out, I'll answer. Before they finish speaking, I've heard. Wolf and lamb will graze the same meadow. Lion and ox eat straw from the same trough. But snakes, they'll get a diet of dirt. Neither animal nor human will hurt or kill anywhere on the holy mountain, says God. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans chapter 4. David confirms this way of looking at it, saying that the one who trusts God to put the putting everything right without insisting on having a say in it is one fortunate man. Fortunate those whose crimes are whisked away, whose sins are wiped clean from the slate. Fortunate the person against whom the Lord does not keep score. Do you think for a minute that this blessing is only pronounced over those who keep our religious ways? and are circumcised? Or do you think it's possible that the blessing could be given to those who never even heard of our ways, who were never brought up in the discipline of God? We all agree, don't we, that it was by embracing what God did for him that Abraham was declared fit before God. Now think, was that declaration made before or after? He was marked by the covenant right of circumcision. That's right, before he was marked. That means that he underwent circumcision as evidence and confirmation of what God had done long before to bring him into the acceptable standing with himself, an act of God he had embraced with his whole life. And it means further that Abraham is father of all people, who embrace what God does for them while they are still on the outs with God, yet as identified as God in an uncircumcised condition. It is precisely these people in these conditions who are called 
set right by God and with God. Abraham is also, of course, faith of those who have undergone the religious rite of circumcision, not just because of the ritual, but because they were willing to live in the risky faith embrace of God's action for them, the way Abraham lived long before he was marked by circumcision. That famous promise that God gave Abraham, that he and his children will possess the earth, was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal, a contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer and with plenty of fine print, only to make sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. And here ends our readings for the day.